Hi, this is John Fallows, V6EY from Calgary, Alberta, and for the next half hour we're going to take a, a short journey through the world of modern diversity reception, which is something I've been playing with for the past five years or so and really enjoying, and I'd like to share my knowledge and uh, excitement <laughs> about this wonderful technique with you. So, what's in this uh, discussion? Well, we're going to start off with a definition and a summary of the use cases for modern diversity reception. Then we'll take a quick look at the history, uh, going back to 1926 when this all started. Then a primer, how it works, and I am promising to do this without math. Uh, you'll see some equations on one slide, but basically it's, it's not going to be math heavy. Then some demonstration videos so you can actually see and hear modern diversity reception in action. And then we'll wrap up just by showing my diversity reception systems that I built and how they work. And perhaps give you a few ideas how you might want to do some of this yourself. So, what exactly is a modern diversity receiver? Well, there's three components that we'll talk about. First, you need a dual channel SDR receiver. And by dual channel, I mean that each channel is sort of like a radio. And so you've got two radios with the same or similar performance that work together. And each channel has a separate antenna. Uh, antennas are spaced apart. There are various forms of diversity reception. Uh, the one I use is called spatial diversity. And so we'll focus on spatial diversity today. The channels are coherent. This is the second most important part. Now by coherent we mean they're basically running together uh, in lockstep with each other. And so with your two channel SDR, each channel has a common local oscillator or DDC clock and a common ADC clock. And the IQ data coming out from the receiver, usually at baseband, is coming out in synchronous streams. They're coordinated together much in the same way that the left and right channels of a stereo audio file are coordinated together. And finally, you need the ability to combine the channels at IQ baseband. So you've got two almost identical receivers working together, the same clocks, coordinated synchronous streams of IQ. And on top of that, this is the important part, you need to be able to adjust the amplitude and phase of each IQ signal coming from the two receivers and combine them at baseband, combine them destructively or constructively, and that's how you get the effect of modern diversity reception. So what's the state of the art? Uh, as of last year, all five of these leading ham transceivers actually do have dual channel coherent signal chains. So the hardware, the box for doing diversity reception with the l most modern ham radio transceivers is actually already there. But only two of these have the ability to provide synchronous IQ data from both channels, and that's the Flex and the Anan. And only one of these, the Anan, provides you with the ability to combine IQ data at baseband for a modern diversity reception. So we are really close right now. Uh, the manufacturers of ham radio gear need to get, <laughs> get their act together and take the next step so we can all enjoy these features. So modern diversity reception has three features. The first is diversity gain. Second is array gain with two antennas. And the third is noise cancellation. And so these are the three features of modern diversity reception uh, it's a huge value proposition that has moved well beyond the original 1926 diversity gain definition and scope. And like I say, it's time for the ham radio manufacturers to actually catch up. So, what are the three use cases for modern diversity reception? Well, the traditional use case is mitigating multipath fading. That's uh, historically what diversity reception was invented for by Henry Beveridge in 1926. So the diversity gain helps you overcome, uh, mitigate the multipath fading of signals, uh, and that can work in HF, it can work in VHF and microwave. Actually, it even works up at light. Secondly is beamforming, or array gain. So since 1905, 
uh, radio experimenters have used phased array antennas starting analog back well over a century ago. And recently, since the 1960s, uh, the advent of signal processing within radio receivers has allowed the creation of digital beamforming, which is where you create the phased array in data as opposed to a whole bunch of different lengths of cables connecting your antennas together. And the third use case uh, for diversity reception is my main use case. It's local RFI reduction, or noise cancellation. So since about 1933, people have been using active audio noise cancelling. Uh, that's basically a phase reversal technique. If you reverse the phase of one signal and add it to the original signal, it cancels. Analog RF cancelers became popular during the 1990s, uh, so the ANC4, the MFJ1026, the NCCs from DX Engineering, and more recently, X-Phase and other homebrew attempts at, uh, at uh, analog cancellation. Digital baseband cancellation really emerged over the past decade, and that's what I use mainly, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So these are the three use cases for diversity reception in uh, 2022. Mitigating multipath fading, beam forming, and local RFI reduction. First, here's that bit of history I promised. So it all started at RCA in 1926. <laughs> Henry Beveridge, <laughs> that guy in the suit over on the right, he invented space diversity after extensive study of signal phasing characteristics. Pretty amazing for its time. Uh, about 10 years later, Holocrafters came up with the DD-1, uh, which was basically, uh, the thing was to create a single control tuning radio. So as you tune this radio, and those two dials on the front of it aren't for each channel, that one's a main tuning and the other's a fine tuning, but basically it, they, it uh, slaved the oscillators together and uh, you were able to do diversity reception. This thing in today's dollars would be about 8,000. <laughs> so it wasn't cheap for its time. And the real key there was uh, <coughs> finding out uh, various amateur radio thought leaders and beverage and so on. After a lot of study, they realized that signals traveling through the ionosphere make their bounce and travel through different paths. And because the paths are different, the signal was arriving at slightly different times. And when it arrived out of phase, it sort of canceled. And that's, that's how fading came, came about. Uh, so diversity reception took advantage of the fact <coughs> that the fading is statistically different and you can actually uh, tune two or three receivers at the same time and pick the strongest signal to get past the effects of multipath fading. And this was in big use all through World War II through the 1960s. Here, for example, is uh, some racks of RCA AR88 receivers used for triple diversity, which was kind of the standard for for most uh, shortwave uh, paths used to send programs from one continent to another. So diversity gain is about tackling multipath fading. You can deal with spatial filtering like we've been talking about. You can have your antennas polarized differently. You can take advantage of different angles of arrival. You can run your diversity on different frequencies or you can make recordings and, and do time diversity. And there's various combining methods. There's algorithms for all this stuff. We're not getting into the math today. Uh, for example, my RSP Duo uses maximal ratio combining for its implementation of diversity reception. And you can see here, you can get, with the different techniques, you can get signal to noise improvement by doing the combining. Array gain is similar but different. Uh, array gain takes advantage of uh, a fixed time delay between antennas. So for example, in my loop array that I have at my house, I have a 30 meter separation or about 100 feet between uh, two antennas. And then I can do a variable time delay or a phase shift inside the radio and I can create beams. So one kind of beam you can do is to focus on increasing signal to noise ratio or you can create an, a beam which points a null specifically at the interference uh, to, to improve performance that way. But all, everything we're talking about is about time delay or phase shift. 
when you're dealing with narrow band, the phase shift is actually the same ki kind of thing as time delay. It's just a different way of achieving it. Um, so <laughs> if you're interested in this stuff, there's a ton of math, and I'd invite you to go and, and do some reading about it. Uh, arrays are very popular in ham radio, especially things like the four square and, and various vertical antennas. But uh, there's all kinds of different ways you can do uh, ar antenna arrays. Doing it analog versus digital, if you look at the uh, slide on the left, you can see that analog beamforming takes place outside the receiver. That's where you have some, uh, some components to actually adjust the phase and adjust the amplitude of the signal coming from each antenna combine them together and then stick that into your receiver. With the modern techniques, the digital beamforming, you actually take the data from different antennas and you put them all into the receiver in different channels and then you use electronics or mathematics to uh, ma manipulate the phase and the amplitude before you sum together. So modern uh, Diversity reception uses the techniques shown on the right-hand side here, a shared local oscillator and sampling clock across multiple channels, convert the data down to baseband, and then do wonderful math to, uh, to create improvements. So here's the basic primer on diversity reception. And we'll start off thinking in terms of uh, combating uh, multipath fading. So basically, you've got a transmitter sending a signal to two different receivers that are combined together uh, and you can combine them either like we showed you before analog or digital or even just in your ears like a lot of the modern ham transceivers that give you two channels uh, they assume you're just going to wear headphones and let your brain do the fading uh, correlations in your head and it's not a very effective way to do diversity perception but that seems to be mostly the state of the art used by Kenwood and Yesu and, and Elcraft and, and, uh, and others. So I'm encouraging people to think differently about diversity reception. Modern diversity receiver design, like I say, it's two different channels, shared oscillator, shared clock, and this is the slide that has a formula in it, but basically you use complex weights to modify the amplitude and phase of each channel down at baseband and add the signals together constructively or destructively. Array gain. So array gain is very deterministic. It's uh, You have two or more similar antennas spaced apart, and the assumption is that each receives an identical copy of a signal at a slightly different time, and that's due to the spacing or the phasing, either externally or internally. Because you're getting the same signal at slightly different times, you can combine constructively to create lobes or destructively to create nulls in the array pattern. And that gives you an average signal-to-noise ratio increase, easily 3 to 6 dB, often uh, more than that, especially if you're trying to create nulls and make certain signals disappear. So that's the array gain part. Diversity gain is a statistical artifact. It's probabilistic. It assumes randomly different copies of the same signal showing up due to multipath. And uh, using two or more receive chains, you can mitigate the effect of the fading and uh, reverse a lot of the destruction that takes place during fades. And that gives you a better probability of signal-to-noise ratio. Finally, the noise cancellation uh, bit is highly deterministic. It's very mathematical. You've got on one channel a distance signal plus some local noise leaking in. And if you can use your other channel just to pick up that same local noise, you can basically subtract the local noise from the combined signal plus noise coming in and get a substantial improvement. In more detail, here's how that local RFI reduction works. So you consider your main antenna. The desired signal is in green the noise is in the black and you can see they're both about the same amplitude coming into your your one channel on your receiver if you have a separate noise antenna that picks up mainly noise with uh, almost nowhere or little signal 
then you can easily amplify or attenuate that noise to be the same level as what's in the main antenna, and then you phase shift at 180 degrees, and you subtract it. And it's actually quite simple in concept, and it's actually not even that hard to do. Uh, Shortwave listeners and hams have been using those analog uh, noise cancelers for years, and now we have the ability to do the same thing in radios. So these are similar but different effects. Diversity gain changes the overall signal-to-noise ratio probability distribution. Basically, the odds of a better SNR are just increased, and uh, you get improvement through combining independent copies of the signal for best results. Array gain is constructive addition of signals coming from a certain direction, and uh, you get basically beamforming with nulls and lobes. And noise cancellation is direct subtraction of local EMI impinging on the desired signal. It's very, very simple mathematics. You adjust the amplitude and you reverse the phase and you get noise cancellation. So all three effects may be achieved with at least two coherent signal chains and ability to manipulate the amplitude and phase of the IQ data at baseband while you combine them mathematically. So there are some limitations to using diversity uh, reception with only two channels. Uh, with diversity gain or fighting multipath fading, with uh, two antennas, you're only going to get about 3 to 6 dB of improvement at best. So that's a limitation. If you had four or five antennas and channels, you'd get more. Uh, array gain is limited to single lobes and nulls when you only have two antennas uh, or two channels with each with one antenna. But the nulls can be quite deep, depending on antenna spacing and frequency. And finally, noise cancellation is limited to a single interference signature at a time, because you're basically just subtracting the signature phase inverse uh, to make it go away. So when you're using this approach, you pick the worst offender to get your improvement. You can also consider putting up multiple noise probes to pick up uh, the best copy of the noise that you can around your home location. So those are the limitations. Now the demonstration. This stuff really works. Uh, first, I'm going to show you two videos uh, on noise cancellation on the 25-meter band. Now, one of my neighbors, about 100 yards away, uh, did a terrible job of a kitchen halogen light installation, which creates... It basically wipes out large chunks of short wave, and I can make that noise disappear, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we'll talk about some of the medium wave and HF beam forming that you're able to do with a couple of antennas. So these are wideband loops spaced 100 feet apart, uh, each going into uh, one channel of my Anan uh, diversity receiver. So on this first uh, video, we'll basically switch between each loop and the combination, and you'll see how the noise just disappears when you combine the two uh, loops together and adjust the phase and amplitude uh, to make the noise just basically disappear. Here we go. Starting the economic development and improving people's lives as it faces what Kim called a great life and death struggle. plenary meeting of the 8th Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea, which began on Monday. You can find at our website, voanews.com. We also have a, no a mobile app that you can download via remote. I'm Marissa Milton, VOA News. So there's your demonstration of uh, the audio. Uh, we're going to look now just at an oscilloscope of what's coming out. The same band, you can see the scope in the lower right. As I adjust the phase and amplitude, you can see how that 120 hertz uh, uh, repetition from the uh, switch mode power supply just disappears. And you can see on the spectrum that 120 hertz and uh, harmonics, again, as you tune uh, to create the noise cancelling effect, you can get 30 to 40 dB of improvement uh, and just simply by subtracting the noise channel from the combined signal and noise channel. And so this is a demonstration in pretty good form of how, how you get uh, noise cancellation to work, which is my favorite uh, 
value proposition, but not the only one. Okay, let's do beam forming. Uh, let's uh, let's go to 2.5 megahertz uh, uh, to WWV, which is uh, <coughs> southwest of me in Boulder, Colorado, and let's take a look at how I can make the signal uh, rise or fall based on the phasing between my two antennas. Here we go. At the tone, two hours, 46 minutes, coordinated universal time. So there's some beam forming um, on uh, 2.5 megahertz. Now here's, uh, we're going to go to medium wave now. And on 730 kilohertz, I've got two stations within range quite easily any evening. The first is in Dauphin, Manitoba, which is a few hundred miles to the east of me. And the second is in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is a few hundred miles to the west of me. And by adjusting the phasing, I can make one station appear and the, uh, the other one disappear. And let's, here's the demonstration. As well. If you have other updates for us, you see anything else out there, something in this list you wanted to hear about but didn't, still very icy weather, wintry conditions throughout the lower mainland, so slow down, increase that follow distance, and go, don't get out on the roads unless you're prepared. <laughs> safely hands-free, get out of on our tour. So this whole uh, experience has really rekindled my interest in, uh, in medium wave DXing. Okay, so there's your examples, uh, there's the demonstration. My diversity receivers, well I have three of them, and uh, I started out a few years ago buying one from, uh, from Israel the Ephedri dual channel SDR net and that costs about three hundred and sixty dollars uh, it gives me two channels and all of short wave and medium wave and I can use power SDR or LINRAD uh, to do my diversity reception then I got the wonderful SDR play RSB du uh, dual two hundred and eighty dollars uh, this uh, basically works from one kilohertz to two gigahertz and if, if you're interested in getting into diversity reception and you want to stick your toe in the water, this is what I'd really recommend you start with um, uh, as a uh, fairly low cost but high performance uh, diversity receiver. And then I got my Anand 7000. I decided I wanted to have a 16-bit uh, uh, receiver and this works with Thetis and all the uh, demonstration videos that I've shown you here today were done on the Anan, uh, which is, like I say, two almost identical receivers, and I hook these up to my different antennas. So my antennas, I live on a normal city lot, nothing fancy. Um, my ham antennas are a beam on a tower and a dipole for 40 meters. I built an array, a 100-foot array, of two uh, wideband loops, and these are active loops. They are fed with uh, cat cable, and I can switch between different directions and I can use each loop individually or in combination. And I also have a couple of noise probes around the edge of my property to help me pick up uh, the noise from my neighbors uh, and do that uh, noise cancellation as well. Although the noise cancellation works fine with the loop and the ham antennas. Uh, <coughs> that station in Dauphin and uh, Vancouver that we were showing on 730 kilohertz Here's how I create the uh, two element beam forming and noise cancellation with the wideband loop array uh, just simply by adjusting the phase and amplitude of the signals coming in from each channel. I can uh, switch the loop to the west or to the east of uh, the array and I can get super gain uh, and diversity uh, noise cancellation out of this system. So my modern uh, diversity reception system performance, amazing ability to reduce nearby RFI across all of HF, 
And uh, secondly, steerable directional patterns below 50 megahertz, the beam forming with the wideband loop array. And f finally, I can do some diversity reception with the uh, SDR UNO software and the uh, RSP dual receiver. So I'm very happy with the performance. Like I say, you can get started in this cheaply if you want to. And uh, building these loop antennas, I, I mentioned before the uh, active antenna amplifiers from LZ1AQ. You can find these. They they cost uh, basically around $100 each, and you can hook two, loop, two loops up to each of them, and you can build these quite easily. So that's my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Uh, there's a lot more information about diversity reception and lots of other stuff in my blog, which I call Making It Up, and there's the uh, address there. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have and uh, tell you more about these exciting things. This is John, the 6EY in Calgary, Alberta.